Welcome back to another Linux quick tip. Today I'm going to be showing you how to kill applications on Linux. Now, the first thing that you need to understand about this is that it's not quite the same on every distro. It's mostly the same. The reason why it's not quite universal is because it really does depend on what display server you're using. Now, if you're using Ubuntu or Fedora and you're using them as they come out of the box, you're probably using Wayland. And the problem with Wayland is that it doesn't use the same tools as Xorg does. Now, if all of that was gibberish to you, I don't really blame you. Really, what it comes down to at the end of the day is that if you're using Ubuntu, vanilla Ubuntu, or you're using the workstation version of Fedora, or anything else that uses Wayland, you're going to be following a slightly different playbook when it comes to killing processes and apps. So I'm going to be going over the most universal ways of killing applications today, and I'll also show you how to do this in regular stock Fedora using Wayland. So before we jump into the Wayland part of this, let's show the way to do this in the most universal way for most people, because most people still use Xorg. So I'm here in BSPWM, which is a Xorg based window manager. So there are three ways that you can kill applications in most Linux distributions if you're using Xorg. So the first way that I want to show you in the Xorg way of doing things is the application called Xkill. Now Xkill will basically allow you to kill any application as long as you're able to interact with something else. So if, as long as your computer is not completely frozen, this should work. So you, what you want to do is open up a terminal and type in the, pr the word Xkill. Now Xkill is installed on the vast majority of Linux distributions as long as they are primarily Xorg focused. So if you're on Fedora, this is not going to come in pre-installed because it won't work in regular Fedora. Now if you're using like the KDE spin or something like that, you can install Xkill, it's just not going to be there by default. So if you do end up having to install it, it's usually packaged under the name Xkill. It's very easy to install, it's in most repositories. Just install it and then run it just like this. So you would hit enter and basically what this is going to do is it's going to tell you to select the window whose client you wish to kill with button one. Basically what that means is that it wants you to click on the window that you want to kill. So in this case, I want to kill this particular window. It's just another terminal. I'm going to click on it and there you go. That particular application has now been killed. It's completely dead. Now that is my favorite way of killing processes on Linux. It's just really simple because you go into a terminal, you type in xkill, you click on the program that's frozen or whatever, and you're done. Now, there are other ways to do it, but they're a little bit more complicated simply because you have to know the name of the application. So I'm going to open up Firefox here. And the second way is to use a program called pkill. Now, pkill requires you to know the name of the application. And when I say the name, I don't necessarily mean what the program is called but the package name so in this case I'm going to guess that the package name of Firefox is actually Firefox so if I type in Firefox like this so and I hit enter Firefox is now killed now you might be able to see where this comes into being a problem if you don't know the name of the package this is not going to work now there is a way if I open up Firefox again there is a way to find out what the package name actually is. So if we type in xprop and hit enter and then click on the application, it will tell us what the name of the application is. So in this case, Firefox is the name of the application. What you're looking for is wm underscore class and that will allow you to use pkill on that particular program. Now again, this is only going to work if you're using xorg. xprop, basically how you know something is xorg specific Usually it has an X at the beginning. That's usually a good rule of thumb. So pkill is another way of doing it. But again, it requires you to basically know what the name of the program is. Now, similarly, the, the third and the last one that I wanted to show you, it also requires you to know the name. So let's just say you had more than one Firefox open. So I'm going to open up actually another Firefox. So I'm going to say control N a couple of times. Now, the thing is, is that if you have multiple instances of a program open, sometimes they all have the same name, sometimes they don't all have the same name, and sometimes they're not even all frozen. 
really it's going to be a little bit confusing if you have multiple instances of a program open, but you want to kill all of them. So the third way of killing a program in Linux is actually the kill all command. This will kill every instance of a program. So if I do kill all and then Firefox and hit enter, Firefox is now dead. Now you can see the advantages of this. If you are only using one instance of a program, pkill or xkill are going to be the best options for you simply because you can just click on it using xkill and it will go away. In some instances, xkill might even kill all the instances. It's not guaranteed though. Kill all, however, will for sure kill everything when it comes to Firefox. Every process that Firefox is in control of, it will kill all of them. So if you need the nuclear option and something is really frozen, kill all is probably your best option. Now, that is the three ways you can kill processes and applications when you're running an Xorg based system. Now, if you're using Wayland, there really isn't a fantastic way of killing something from the terminal. So if you're a nerd and you prefer to kill stuff from the terminal, you're kind of out of luck. I'm sure there's probably a way to do it. I'm just actually, you know, I've never heard of it. The best way to kill a process or an application on Wayland, or in this case, GNOME, anything based on Wayland, is using the process monitor. So you want to go into your applications folder, find system monitor here, open that up. Basically what this is doing is showing you all the processes and applications that are running on your system. So let's open up a thing of Firefox here. Okay, now that we have Firefox open, we go back to our system monitor and we hit the search button up the, bo the search box up here at the top and type in Firefox. Now, in some instances, you're going to find that you don't actually have anything that's called Firefox, in which case you're going to have to kind of hunt and peck. And the reason why I say that is because you never know which one of these you're going to kill that's actually going to end up killing Firefox, because most of these are going to be individual tabs or some other process that Firefox has started. Usually the one you can kind of count on being actually Firefox, if you don't have actual Firefox here, is the one that's using the most memory. It's not always true, it's sometimes true. In this case, we do have an instance of Firefox. We'll just click on it, hit end process, end process again, and Firefox has been killed. Now, this is the process you can use if you're using a desktop environment of any kind. It doesn't really have to be Wayland specific. If you're using a uh, KDE or XFC or Budgie or whatever, most of them come with some kind of system monitor or something like that that allows you to see the running processes, and all of them function basically the same. So. They have a list of processes and applications, and you find the one you want to kill, you click on it, and you hit end process, or kill, perhaps, if that's what they've used, whatever. So it doesn't really mean that you have to be using something that is Wayland in order to do this. It's really not that complicated. If you're in a desktop environment of any kind, whether you're using Wayland or Xorg, it doesn't really matter, you can do it in a GUI fashion like this. I really wish I would have said that beforehand instead of focusing on Wayland because that's probably just going to confuse most of you. So I apologize for that. If you're using a desktop environment and you'd prefer to do it in a GUI, you can do it in this fashion. If you try the Xorg way, which I showed you in the beginning of this, the video using the terminal commands, and those don't work, even if you're in a desktop environment, chances are you're probably in Wayland or some other situations going on, then you should use your graphical up system monitor or whatever to kill the process. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what happens if your entire system is frozen and you can't get to any of these things? Well, the answer to that question is pretty simple. There's a power button on your computer. Press and hold that thing until your computer goes dark and start it back on. If Linux freezes, that's probably the best way to do it. Now, you can, if you want, try to get into a TTY in which case you're going to want to send one of these buttons. So usually control alt F3 is the best one. That's usually the one that I use. Control alt F2 and F1 sometimes are taken up with something else. So control alt F3 will take you to an, a TTY, which is basically the underlying shell of your computer. It asks you to log in and then you can try to kill whatever application is killing or freezing your computer. You can try. If that doesn't work, you can also reboot from here. So you could log in like so, and then just do reboot like that. And that would reboot your system, even if it's been frozen. Now, like I said, if you can't get to a TTY, a hard reset with the power button is probably your only option. So that is another quick tip on Linux Cast. If you enjoyed this 
thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter, Mastodon, Odyssey. All those links will be in the video description below. Thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing, so thanks for that. But without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now, so thanks so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.